Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about where I expect AI to go in the next 50, in the next 100 years. I recently actually made a video about this just a couple days ago as to where I expect AI to go in the next 20 years. If you haven't checked that out, it's down in the description. And if you like this sort of AI talk, if you're interested in this, definitely subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of content like this and I think it's pretty interesting. If you think it's interesting, you know, subscribing helps out a lot. But anyway, I want to start out by first summarizing where I think AI will go in the next 20 years if you just want the short version of that video. If you did see that video though, feel free to skip ahead a little bit. This is just going to be a recap. But starting off, I think one of the biggest changes we'll see in the next 20 years is a huge move towards bigger and better models, almost possibly sort of rivaling the size of the human brain in terms of parameters. It's a bit hard to compare numbers there because it's not apples to apples, but definitely a lot bigger models is a big thing. And I think neuromorphic computing will also come along, basically computing hardware that is a lot more suited for AI specific tasks. And that will help us basically adapt and you know be able to run these big models more efficiently and just scale the size of what we can do. And as we scale models, I think there will also be a huge shift in the focus of machine learning research. We'll probably focus less on these small tasks and more on combining these types of models, seeing what they can do in combination when they're huge and they have all these different modules. As research grows and we have these new types of research, I think that will help pave the way for making new general models that can do all sorts of tasks instead of you know all the sorts of narrow AI we have right now. We have things like transfer learning and stuff, but we are still a long shot away from general AI systems that have all these sorts of modules that can do multiple things. Right now, we're really focused on single task stuff. And I think in the next 20 years, that's looking to change a lot. I think those models will also be commercialized. You'll be able to purchase these and you'll be able to have them like assistants right now. You have Alexa and Google Assistant. I think you have a lot more powerful assistants in the near future. And that will, you know, as that becomes commercialized, that will also probably lead to some job loss, lead to lots of menial jobs being sort of automated away as, you know, that's what we already see right now. And there's no reason to think that that trend won't continue. And wrapping up my previous video recap, the final point is that I think all of that will come along with lots of legal regulations or at least talk and discussion about what should be done about legal you know, regulations regarding AI. As jobs disappear, there'll be more and more pressure from the citizens of a country to put regulations in place to help people and make sure that they're you know, either not losing their jobs or they have some other way to survive. Anyway, now that we have that out of the way, I want to get into what I think will happen within the next 50 years. I think it's, it's pretty hard to predict there's gonna be a lot that will happen, but the first things that I expect are sort of leading off what I said with the 20 years, right? We'll have these generalized AI agents and they'll start to automate away lots of the menial jobs we see today. And that will come with some pros and cons. One, you know, people will be able to move into things maybe they're more interested in, but it will also mean loss of jobs for many people. And it might be hard to recover those jobs for some people or rather transition into new fields. So I think with that, we'll see a lot of social unrest, a lot of turmoil as people are sort of shifting and trying to figure out what to do. I expect new markets to pop up sort of things that it's hard to predict because, you know, I can't say what they are. If I knew what they were, people would probably be, be working on these things today, or maybe not because, you know, there's shifting demands with, you know, as, as AI rises and cultural shifts within the next 20 or 50 years, it's hard to predict exactly what will happen, but I do expect a lot of new markets to arise that compensate for this fact that, you know, there's lots of things that AI can't do, or there are some things AI can't do where there are some things it can do really well. With all that mass unemployment and all these changes, I expect a lot of new markets to arise from the ashes of what used to be. I can't say exactly what those will be, but they will likely be things that is really hard for AI to automate, things where human compassion is required, not just an imitation of it, but a guarantee that you're you know, working with an actual human, maybe some creative work, even though creative work might be able to be mimic mimicked by AI, some people might value having something that was actually created by a human. So I think we'll see a massive rise in those fields and you know, I'm curious to see what those fields will be. And hopefully there'll be enough jobs to compensate for the ones lost, but I don't think we'll get there very immediately. There'll probably be a lot of chaos before we get to a place that everyone can be you know, happy with. And while I do think that will also spark um, even more talks about regulation within the government for you know, how they should regulate AI, how they should keep people employed and what they can do to sort of limit the impact or the, the negative impacts, right? Because there are, are also a lot of positive impacts that I'll get into. But I think one thing that they'll be met with is a lot of corporate resistance. At least one thing we see right now in the US is that 
the country is essentially becoming an oligarchy where the government is having less and less power as big companies, especially tech firms like Google, Facebook, are Amazon too, are just lobbying so hard that, you know, the constituents of the country, or at, at least of the US, are having less and less say as to, you know, what actually happens in politics day after day. And I expect this to continue for definitely some years to come. I'm not entirely sure this will continue for the next 50 years, and I can't speak for other countries, but I think the political climate will have a heavy impact on how AI progresses. Very hard to say how that will go, but if the f current trend continues for the next 50 years, which 50 years, I'm not sure, but if it continues, that is definitely, I think, an issue, issue we will see, a war between companies and governments and people of a, citizens of a country you know, trying to debate where AI should be regulated and what should be changed and what shouldn't be changed. Anyway, that's enough for the birdie. Now into some of the more exciting parts of this. The first thing that I think we will see are probably the rise of general artificial intelligence. And this is something that people talk about, like to talk about all the time. Intelligence that is just as smart as humans can do anything a human can do. And I think within the next 50 years, we will be just about reaching that point, if not already there. Give, you know, give or take 10, 20 years, can't get an absolute ballpoint on it. But I think when we start to think about 50 years, we're within that range, we might have it by then. And if we do, it probably won't be commercialized by that point, but it will certainly be something that these bigger companies have access to and researchers are starting to discover. And maybe it will take massive amounts of capital or something to get something going, but we'll probably see, you know, machines that are just as smart as humans in every way possible. And that will really be a game changing moment. That's what, where we'll probably start to see inklings of the singularity if you know if the singularity is to come which not sure if it will but i have another video on it if you're interested in that another area that i think is super exciting are neural machine interfaces we'll probably see a huge rise within 50 years within the next 50 years we'll probably have you know Neuralink right now is looking into or they're about to start looking into how neural interfaces can work and help with you know neurodegenerative diseases or or afflictions i i don't know the terminology because i'm not a medical person but hopefully within the next 50 years, they'll have lots of that figured out and lots of that solved. And I think people will start looking into more, well, I think it'll be commercialized for one, and people will start looking into uses other than, you know, just for neuro like degenerative issues. They'll probably look into like entertainment or, you know, telepathy, these crazy sorts of things. I think the field will definitely be a lot richer at that point. Right now, not a lot of companies have the resources to do that. And a lot of the groundwork has let yet to be laid out. Neuralink is really one of the only companies doing these crazy invasive interfaces right now. But I think in 50 years, there will be there, you know, hopefully they will have laid the groundwork by that point. And there will be a lot more companies that are going into this and a lot more research and data coming out. The last thing I want to touch on for the 50 year period, and this is, I think, super exciting, something I wasn't thinking about until I really started doing the research for this video is we'll have completely customized content, creative content, you know, books, movies. You won't be asking your friends if they've seen a certain movie or another movie, unless maybe you share your personal list with them because your movies and your books and your everything will be customized to you, tailored to what you enjoy. And that will be really crazy. It will probably mean a lot of really great entertainment, but it might also shift the way we view entertainment. So who knows what's to come there. Now, within the next hundred years are th where things really start to change. I mean, that's not true. Things really start to change in 50 years, but within the next hundred years, I think we'll see another sort of end of an era. Hopefully we'll see the end of the era of AI creating all these issues for people and people losing jobs and all this, you know, hectic, crazy stuff. And I'm hoping that within the next hundred years, things like universal basic income will be implemented. We'll have a good idea about what types of AI should be regulated and how they should be regulated. And hopefully people are really going to be setting in to a much more comfortable and a much more peaceful type of life within the next hundred years. I think that we will see humans, you know, research that humans used to do probably almost entirely being done by AI at that point, if not 100%. Instead of humans doing all this, you know, labor intensive work or super highly skilled work, it will probably all be replaced by artificial intelligence that can do a much better job. And that will pave the way for a cultural revolution in which work isn't essential anymore. And because of that, you know, culture will change a lot and humans will have to find a new way to find value. Not that work is the only way that humans find value in life right now, but it is certainly one way that lots of humans do derive value. I'm no psychologist, but I think there's been lots of discussion about this. And, it, you know, there's no doubt that to some extent that is the case, that humans find value in work. So once that is no longer necessary, I think new avenues will open, new markets, 
And hopefully by the next 100 years, people will have really figured out what those are and we'll see those be very commonplace and the norm. We'll probably see robots in cities and streets, definitely self-driving cars, probably in the next 50 years, it will, will all be self-driving. But we'll also start to, with the cultural shift and all these you know, technological shifts and the shift of how cities look and, and really everything, we'll probably also see a change in human values. You know, maybe expansion of the human race won't be something we're as excited about anymore. Maybe we have conquered a couple planets and we're like, okay, this is enough. We want to settle down in our planet, limit the population to what we have now, and just, you know, be happy with our lives and continue everything as it progresses. I, I really have no clue, but th thinking that values will stay constant over 100 years seems like a really bad assumption to me. And it seems much more likely that considering all the factors that are changing, we probably won't have the same values as human beings that we have today. People will probably also be a lot more focused on their creative work, things that they really enjoy. I already mentioned this, but because jobs aren't necessary, they'll have to find other things to do. Maybe that will be creative work, or maybe with these new neural implants, we'll have full, you know, deep dive reality, and you'll be able to go in and experience your own worlds instead of just, you know, having your own movies generated. Maybe you'll have your entirely own world generated for you, sort of like Matrix sort of thing. I'm not sure we'll get there in 100 years. Even if we do have the technical know-how, we definitely could be limited by physical resources. That is one thing that with AGI you can't overcome. You know, we have a limited amount of resources. We can always go out and scavenge the universe, but you know, we're limited by time. There's only so many things we can do in such a short amount of time, no matter how smart you get. So I think once we get to the next 100 years, we'll be a lot less focused on research and figuring out all these new things. We'll probably know a lot. We'll probably know everything we really wanna know. Well, that's not, there, there will always be new things to know, right? But that will probably be less of a focus and we'll be more focused on manufacturing and collecting resources and just scaling up processes to meet you know, the human supply that the human race will have, which I'm assuming will have a lot more people by then, especially if we are a multi, you know, multi-planetary species. As crazy as it may sound, within a hundred years, we might even not be looking at death as a, a huge issue anymore. We might have solved, you know, cured lots of diseases. And even if we haven't, that might be the time, especially if we have sort of these neural implants, we might be looking into cloning human brains, right? Or, Im or immortality through like artificial bodies and just supporting the brains. And maybe we can come up with technologies to keep brains alive, even if we can't keep bodies alive and we have to use artificial bodies. It, it's really hard to say a hundred years, I think is really far out to predict. So I don't want to make too many more guesses, but some really crazy stuff could happen. <laughs> I mean, needless to say, right, it's 100 years, but I'm really excited to see, you know, AI will definitely, I feel like humans will sort of just be flowing along and doing as they want, while AI at that point will really be taking over the hall in terms of doing all the heavy lifting, all the work, all the research, all the support for the human race. Well, the human race will have to, you know, really settle down and figure out what are our new goals as like a, as a race. And maybe instead of figuring out what it is as a race, everyone will be able to choose their own goals and we'll be able to sort of, you know, AI will be able to help them achieve their own goals and sort of take their own paths. And that could lead to, you know, right now we have entire cultures that have similar values. Maybe we'll have very small populations that each have entirely separate values and we'll see vastly different populations even within a small number of people. You know, really anything could happen and I'm really excited to see what is to come. One thing to mention though, is that this is probably the more optimistic route there is of course, the possibility that AI, you know, singularity leads to robots that want to kill all of humans. That's certainly possible. We could also, you know, blow each other up in a nuclear warfare or using, you know, artificial intelligence to uh, do all sorts of cybersecurity attacks. You know, some really bad stuff could come of this too. So this is probably a more optimistic look of what could happen in the next 50 and the next 100 years. But that is really all I have for now. If you enjoy this type of content, you like talking about AI, machine learning, you want tutorials, that sort of thing definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel. I release a lot of content like this and it really means a lot. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you next time.